Today I'm showing you a very weird, but good, mixed berry mead that I made. Let's get started. So this is a mixed berry mead. It's actually in this keg. And I'm gonna use the word unorthodox because I feel like I did some things that were just kind of weird when it came to um, the making of this brew. I've made a lot of mixed berry meads in the past and I've made a lot of sweet ones. I really wanted to make a drier version of this mead. So what I did was I concocted this simple mixed berry mead recipe, which started with a kind of like basic wildflower honey, about four pounds, or excuse me, eight pounds of mixed berries. We got our water up to somewhere in the three or four um, gallon range. I'll have a whole recipe card here. Basically, that's my starting recipe. It started off simple, and then you'll see some things on there, and you'll go, wait, what, what, why? Was it, why is it in a keg? Well, this doesn't make any sense. It's a still mead. Why would it be in a keg? So, that's the recipe card. I like mixed berries things because I think they're complex and fun. This mead started off really simply. I had taken my eight pounds of mixed berries, I put them in a bucket, and then, or they were frozen. I think that's important to say. Frozen mixed berries, uh, put them in a bucket, added pectic enzyme, and I kind of just doused it with a pectic enzyme. I didn't really try and do any like uh, measuring, probably should have. After dousing it with plenty of pectic enzyme, we let them set for about 24 or 48 hours to really um, break down the fruit skins. That's what the pectic enzyme does. It helps break down the fruit skins, get more juice out of that fruit. We then went ahead and mixed up together our honey, our water, our mixed berries that had sat there for a while, and then of course our yeast. My yeast choice was the Lalvin BM 4x4, and I chose this because it's good with red wine, uh, you know, ferments generally. So I thought that kind of fit the bill for mixed berries. It also adds some bigger body or mouthfeel sometimes, which is kind of interesting. It's a very fun yeast. We added that in. After mixing all the stuff up, we added plenty of Fermade O that was on the recipe card as you saw, because we're feeding our yeast. It's very important. After mixing that up, we took a gravity reading. It was at about 1.080 starting gravity. And uh, that's with me superpower drilling all that fruit. So I believe we got a lot of the, uh, the fruit juice out of those fruit in general. 1.080 starting gravity will lead us to about a 10.5% brew. It's pretty good, standard strength for us. Fermentation was about three weeks. And I say, you know, it probably finished in two, but I let it set for about three to four weeks. I think it was like a 25 day or something like that where I just let it set. I let it set on the fruit skins to help add some more of the tannin, to really extract the flavors. Also, the time for the yeast to kind of clean up the brew because your yeast post-fermentation do go through a process. They don't just stop. They kind of also clean up some of the, the uh, funkiness that comes with a brew, or I should say that comes with fermentation. After that, we racked it into a new container. We stabilized it with our potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. Your options otherwise are to pasteurize. Um, that's basically your main stabilizing thing. The stabilizing side was really not necessary here. Uh, I, I decided I was, I was gonna do it for a safety reason just because, but I ended up like leaving this dry. So I really didn't need to stabilize it in hindsight. Here's where the, uh, the little fork in the road hits and you go, wait, what happened here? So that's a very like standard mixed berry mead experience right there. From there, you could kind of offshoot and do the normal thing of like, okay, well now it's stabilized. I can back sweeten with more honey. I can add more juice. I can uh, do these things. I kind of went a different way. I wanted to, uh, I had this grand idea as I was driving one day, I drove past the liquor store and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go in and find some mead. Well, I, f I found a bottle of port and I was like, it'd be interesting to do something with port, which is a kind of desserty wine, fortified wine. And um, I'd like to do something with port and mead. So I took this, uh, these French oak chips and soaked, I don't remember how much it was, maybe a, an ounce or something like that, of French oak chips. I uh, soaked them in about a half a bottle of this port for like, maybe two weeks, roughly around that room. And at that point, after the two week mark, I said, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into the brew. And so that's what I did. I literally pitched it in to the brew. Those oak chips in that port probably fortified a little bit there. So I don't know the ABV change now, 
but uh, it also added flavor and the oak of course added flavor. My intent in the first place was to just use the oak chips and not the port itself. But then I ended up just dumping the whole thing. So my original intent was like, what if I try and get this port kind of taste imparted into the brew via oak chips and soaking and stuff. It ended up kind of diverting from that. About two weeks later on oak chips and port and things, we have racked it off of that again, and we added a little bit of a vanilla extract I made with vanilla beans and some actual like whiskey. So I kind of got some more character there. To help round it out, I noticed it was kind of sharp and I wanted a rounding thing without adding a lot of sweetness. So that vanilla extract idea kind of helped. This technically has had some fortification too, between port and a little bit of whiskey. This thing might be like 12% now. I don't know, somewhere in that realm. This whole time it stayed dry. No more sweetness added. I can I contemplated adding uh, honey to this, but I was like, I'm just gonna stay true. I wanna make a true dry mixed berry. So you might ask, why is it in a keg? Well, I, I put it in a keg. Uh, I did this because I didn't have enough vessels for holding it. And I also wanted to put a little CO2 on top of it to kind of hold the, um, take away that blanket of air on the top, oxygen on the top. So it is not carbonated, it's still, I put it on a really low PSI. We're talking like two or three. This is not enough to carbonate, just enough to serve. So what it looks like, beautiful red. This glass is terribly not clean as I'm seeing it in the light, but that's okay. I think it looks pretty dang good. Honestly, it's really interesting too. Now I could give you all my tasting notes, but I really wanted just to describe what happened here. This thing fermented out. We fortified it, so ABV is weird. It's in a keg, port oak, vanilla extract, not that weird. Um, it just kind of took a bunch of turns, got experimental. And I enjoy getting to do experimental things. So this isn't to say like, go do this recipe necessarily, but this is to say, maybe go be experimental. See what happens. What happens when you throw in this thing or use port or stuff like that. My buddy, Tony actually came and taste tested this and he's a big wine guy. And when I made something drier, I was like, okay, well, this kind of fits the bill for a wine guy. Although he likes mead. So I hope you enjoy the tasting with Tony. Here we go. Tony, welcome to a tasting of a dry mead. I don't do a lot of these. Cool. And uh, when I, after I made it, I, you know, I, I thought of you first. Thanks. Take that as you will. Okay. Well, it. I don't know anything about this. Uh, yep. Just that it's got. Like, it is a dry right? mead. I don't want to spoil too much. I would just want you to taste it first, and then I'll start to reveal as it goes along. Okay. All right. So give me, just give me a taste. Let me know what you think. Smell all those things, of course. First impression? That's good. Uh, a lot of red fruit. Yep. Really high acid, which yep. Which I like. Mm -hmm. That was the other thing I thought. When I acid, I was like, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, I mean, I love high acid kind of anything. Um, it's balanced, moderate alcohol. This is a mixed berry mead that I let go dry. And then I just started to get a little adventurous with it. I was like, okay, well, I've made a lot of mixed berry things. And I wanted to keep this one dry and make it whiny. So I took and bought a bottle of port wine. I couldn't tell you the name of what it was. It was kind of lower tier. Okay. Soaked some oak chips in uh, with that port wine okay. for I don't know how long and uh, dumped that into the mead so I would oak it. And then theoretically- Just I'd, the chips. Well, I did, I did some of the port as well. Okay. So it's got maybe a little bit of sweetness coming from that. Um, if anything, I, did, I got a double check gravity on it. But theoretically, trying to get a little bit of that You'll port character. From it, I, yeah. thought, I, I thought about just doing the chips, but then I ended up, I was just like, well, let's see what happens. So got a little experimental. So it has port soaked oak chips, plus a, maybe a, about a cup of port wine in this three gallon batch. That's the thing is it's like such a small amount in this, um, no acid balance, no, nothing changed there. No sweetness added other than maybe what came from How the port. How much did it raise the alcohol? Um, I, like, like I said, I only use maybe about a cup of port wine. Uh -huh. It's really good. I mean, and so I mean, have you heard of uh, dark a dark like a dark rye? Have mm -hmm. you heard of dark rye before? Mm -mm. It's a style of rye. Basil Hayden makes one. I'm not a fan of 
that style. Yeah. Um, nothing Basil Hayden does. It's just I just don't like that style of, yeah. of rye very much. But um, I think you can do it with other things. Yeah. <clears throat> but they put port in it. Mm. I also am just I love port, but right. I'm I'm like not a port. It's, it is, you gotta have a taste for it. It is. I, I, I like port, I just don't like port finished yeah. stuff, typically. Um, and in, in whiskey mm -hmm. in, in particular. Interesting. Um, I, I've had other, um, I've heard certain, certain like single malts and things. Huh. Sometimes I just think like American whiskey doesn't do well with it because it's already so sweet. Yeah. This is all just personal preference. Yeah. Um, there's been a, I've had a couple of other dark ryes and they're just not for me, but. Did uh, basil, you, basil Hayden is the most common, and, and a lot of people like it. Yeah. So, uh, well, now you know. that I've said port, do you pick up any of that character? Not a ton. I would have. I would have. Um, That's part of why I didn't want to say anything because I don't want you to go like, oh, it's I port, and all of a sudden you're like. It makes me. Uh, it makes me wonder if, because I, I generally don't like. Um, I like the idea of mixed berry things. I think sometimes <laughs> yeah. more than I really like mixed berry because a lot of times it comes. It comes out like a little sweet, a little yeah. too sweet, and and then the the berry. Like the mixed berry thing is can very much feel artificial. Yeah. But I feel like with this, because you you add a port which has spirit in it as well. Yeah. You, know, you essentially lightly fortify yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which is which is cool. I mean, I don't know if anyone else has ever done that before. But is people it, do is, a lot of it, fortified wines. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, in 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 meat, like, is it is is doing this? Has other people done? Have other people? Done I don't. I haven't seen much about people you know soaking oak chips. That was my weird, sciency MacGyver oh. kind of thing. I haven't seen much with that. So. so, I mean, even without knowing what dark what dark rye is, you, you kind of executed this. I would be curious to see how you how this would turn out by without any fruit. Yeah. Like a traditional. Oh, interesting. So like a traditional, for example, and blending port in it. Mm. And I don't know. I know you said you let this ferment further after adding the uh, wine. Correct. Yes, I believe so. It's been a while. This one's been a hot minute uh, okay. since I thought of it. I mean, it's dry. It is. It should be 1.000 dry. Because you have more potential alcohol and yeah. this sort of thing and fermentable sugars, whereas with a distillate, yeah. you know, obviously, it's a finished product. Right, right. right. So, so the, the, the rye is going to come out, and, and then they're just blending in, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to worry about fermentable sugars. Right. With something like this, though, you, you might run into the... Obviously, this didn't happen, but you could run into that problem if you just took a traditional mead, for example, yeah. you could run into a secondary if it's mm. not right. stable. Yeah. Um, this is really good. It's, um, a, it's experimental. And I think, you know, I'm not, for anyone watching, I'm not saying go and soak um, oak chip. I don't know that it imparted a lot necessarily. Like the port side, I think probably. you could have, do you have more port? I don't have more of that port. Do you have any port? No, I don't know. Uh, I would have brought some. I know. Look we're gonna we're gonna experiment with it and then we'll dive deeper. There's cool. A there's another video coming out, maybe in a little bit. Right, yeah, a good bit. job on this. This is cool. Thank you for being part of the taste. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Sorry, I, I uh, promised these guys I'd start this. We're we're tasting these in front of them.